is lend and not borrow. Lend and not borrow. I want to talk to you today about money. But more importantly, I want to talk to you about debt. About debt. What is debt? Debt is basically borrowing money to pay for something that you can't afford to pay for today or right now. Y'all, society today, they glorify debt. Whether you're watching TV or listen to the radio or on the internet, they're constantly trying to convince you to go into debt, to buy things that we sometimes don't need and things that we sometimes can't afford. Y'all, society today makes you think that you need to keep up with the Joneses or to live a certain lifestyle in order to be happy. Amen? Y'all, in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord talks to the Israelites about debt. And he gave them some guidelines for dealing with debt. He told them if they owed anybody anything, after seven years, they were to forgive the debt. Now, are we doing that today, y'all? If somebody owes us something, y'all, some money for a long period of time, are we letting them out of the debt when we see that they can't pay us or they're not going to pay us? Or are we still holding their foot to the fire? Y'all, some people are mad at people that borrowed money from them 15 to 20 years ago. The Lord told the Israelites, if somebody borrowed something from them and they ain't got it back in seven years, to let it go. And the same thing goes for us, y'all. If you loan somebody some money and it's been years ago, you might as well let it go. You might as well forgive them of that debt. Amen? Y'all, i never forget, there was a person that borrowed $100 from me. Now, y'all, this has been years ago. But when the person borrowed the money from me, they assured me that they were going to pay the money back. But when some time passed by and I didn't, I didn't hear from them, I called them and asked them about my money. And y'all, don't you know they went off on me? They said, don't you call me about no money. They said, when I get the money, I'll give it to you. They said, don't you ever call me about no money. Now, y'all, don't you know that to this day, I still haven't got that $100 back. But at some point, I had to let it go. And you should too, amen? So the Lord told the Israelites to cancel all debt after seven years. He told them if they loaned anything to a fellow Israelite, uh, not to charge them interest on the debt. This would be like y'all, us loaning somebody $100, and then you telling them that they gotta pay you $125 back. The Lord told the Israelite, that's a no-no. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. Now, I want us to specifically look at what the Lord said to the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 5 and 6 about debt. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 5 and 6 about debt. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 5 and 6 about debt. And it's up here on the board, y'all. In verse 5, the Lord says, If only you fully obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all these commands I am giving you today. Verse 6, for the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. Now listen to this, y'all. And you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. You will rule over many nations, but none will rule over you. So the Lord told the Israelites, y'all, if they did right by him, that they would lend to many nations, but they will borrow from none. So we see from verse 6 that the Lord's best for the Israelites was to lend and not borrow. Now, if the Lord's best for the Israelites is to lend and not borrow, don't you believe that the Lord's best for us is to lend and not borrow? But if that's the case, y'all, if we really believe that the Lord's best for us is to lend and not borrow, why do so many people have so much debt? I want to read you some statistics about debt. <coughs> Y'all, the national debt in the United States today stands at more than $30 trillion. Y'all, to pay $30 trillion off, each man, woman, and child in the United States would have to pay $92,718. Y'all, the average person in the United States has more than $6,000 in credit card debt. And a lot of people have more than that. The state that we live in, y'all, Georgia, is one of the top 10 states with the highest amount of credit card debt. 
Now, the average individual debt of each person living in the United States as of 2020, y'all, was approximately $145,000. As a nation of people, y'all, we love debt. <laughs> Amen. Now, y'all, the Bible does not all out for being debt or going into debt, but it don't speak positively about it either, y'all. The Bible acknowledges that debt is a part of life, but it also gives us several warnings about debt or going into debt that we need to pay attention to. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs uh, chapter 22. I'm going to read verse 7. Proverbs chapter 22. I'm going to read verse 7. Proverbs chapter 22. I'm going to read verse 7. Proverbs 22 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Now, what does that mean, y'all? The borrower is the slave of the lender. It means when you go into debt, whether it be credit card debt or debt because of a loan you took out, when you sign your name on that dotted line, it means a certain amount of your time, a certain amount of your energy, and a certain amount of your money now belongs to someone else. Because you signed your name on that dotted line, y'all, you, the borrower, now have become a slave to the lender. Because you took out that loan or ran up that credit card, you now go to work because you have to go to work, not because you want to go to work. That debt that you agreed to, y'all, took you from working by choice to working by force. Amen. Debt makes us bound to another person, y'all. And it's what is almost a master-slave relationship. A master-slave relationship that won't be resolved until that debt is paid in full. That's why the Bible warns us to be very careful about debt. Amen. Amen. The Bible is right, y'all. The borrower is a slave to the lender. Y'all, that's a lot of reasons why the Bible warns us about debt. Did you know that debt can cause anxiety? It can cause depression. Yeah. Some people lay up at night wondering how they're going to pay for stuff mm -hmm. that they bought on credit yeah. that they really didn't need in the first place. Oh, and y'all, the number one reason why the Bible warns us about debt is debt not only takes away our freedom, but it takes away our freedom to do what the Lord called us to do. Y'all, some people want to come to church on Sunday, yeah. but their debt is saying to them, no, wow. you got to go to work. Yeah. You got bills. You got a credit card to pay. Amen. Yeah. That debt makes them have to choose between coming to church wow. and going to work. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, y'all, but nine times out of ten, going to work is going to win that battle. Amen. Okay. Amen. Some people are calling the ministry, y'all, or to do a work for the Lord, but they don't have time to focus on the Lord's work wow. because they got bills. Mm. Bills accumulated, uh, accumulated buying things that they didn't need. Mm. And it's keeping them from doing what the Lord called them to do or doing what they were designed to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to be very careful, y'all, because without realizing, we'll choose the temporary over the eternal. Mm -hmm. Stuff or things, y'all, cars, houses, clothes, all that stuff is temporary. Mm -hmm. But doing the work for the Lord or doing what the Lord called you to do is eternal. Amen. Amen. So we got to be real careful about debt. And the sad part about debt is, y'all, like I said, a lot of stuff we go into debt buying is stuff we don't need. Yeah. A lot of that stuff we throw to the side a few days after we get it. Yeah. Amen. Y'all, yeah. we got to stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, if somebody asks you, what was the greatest thing that God ever did? What would you say? Would you say that he created the heavens and the earth? Or he parted the Red Sea? Or he raised people from the dead? Y'all, all those are incredible things. But the greatest thing that God ever did was he gave. Yeah. He gave. Yeah. He gave his one and only son. So if the greatest thing that God ever did was to give, don't y'all think it's important for us to be givers also? Mm -hmm. But how can we be givers, y'all, when every dime that touches our hand mm -hmm. is owed out to somebody else? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, y'all, if they didn't have so much debt, they would probably be some awesome givers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to give. They just don't have it to give right, right. because they're bogged down with debt. Mm -hmm. Y'all, generosity or giving should be one of our first priorities. Amen? Amen. Y'all, but debt 
is a generosity killer. If all your money is owed out to somebody else, y'all, it literally makes it possible for you to give to the church or give to somebody else in need. Amen. 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 Now, y'all, like I said before, the Bible does not all out for being dead, but we do need to be careful about going into debt. Y'all, I get it. Some things in life would be very difficult for us to buy if we didn't go into debt, like buying a house or buying a car. But we still got to be careful not to buy more house than we can afford or to take on a car note that we can't afford. Amen. 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 We got to be careful about those things. Amen. 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 Because if you take on more car note, y'all, than you can afford, it's going to cause you financial problems in the future. Amen. Amen. I want to give you a little piece of advice, y'all. If you go to a, a car dealership to buy a car, know what you can afford to pay for the car before you get to the dealership. Right. That way, if they try to take, save you too much car, it's okay to walk away. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know Rodney won't like to hear that because he sells cars for a living. <laughs> but y'all, don't buy more car than you can afford. Amen. Because all it's going to do is cause you financial problems yeah. down the road. Amen. I want to give you four basic principles that you can use to help guide your decisions about debt or going into debt. Number one. And they're up, they're up here on the board, y'all. Number one, if you need to go into debt, do so only when absolutely necessary. Meaning, don't take on debt that you don't have to take on, yeah. but or that you don't have a way to pay it back. Right. Y'all, a lot of people take on debt and have no idea how they're going to pay that debt back. Mm -hmm. Y'all, that's a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. Amen. Number two, borrow only what you need. Borrow only what you need. Y'all, some companies will offer you loans for way more than what you need. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for it. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. Y'all, the more money they loan you, the longer you're going to be in debt. Mm -hmm. And the more interest you're going to have to pay mm -hmm. over the life of the loan. Mm -hmm. If you don't need it, y'all, don't borrow it. Mm -hmm. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. Number three, if you're going to go into debt, try to do so for something that will increase in value. If you're going to go into debt, y'all, try to do so for something will, that will increase in value, like a house. Y'all, houses over a period of time generally go up in value, mm -hmm. while cars or vehicles generally go down in value. Mm -hmm. A house is generally a good investment, while a car or a vehicle is generally a poor investment. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go into debt, y'all, do so for something that will increase in value. Mm -hmm. Amen? Number four, if you're going to go into debt, y'all, try to pay back the debt as quickly as possible. If you're going to go into debt, y'all, try to pay back that debt as quickly as possible. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28 says, do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it's in your power to do it. Do not say your neighbor, go and come again tomorrow, I will give it when you have it with you. Y'all, when God bless you with the money to pay off a debt, pay it off. Don't take a trip with the money <laughs> or go to the casino to, with the money. Pay off the debt. Amen. Amen. And speaking of going to the casino, y'all, <laughs> y'all, gambling is not a smart use of your money. Amen. 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 Don't gamble with your money. Don't gamble with the resources that God has blessed you with. It's not a smart use of your money. Amen. Amen. It's not. Now, I've heard some people say that the Bible don't say nothing about gambling. The Bible don't forbid gambling. But the Bible does say that a fool and his money shall soon part ways. Right. Amen. Amen. Remember that, y'all. A fool and his money shall soon part ways. Meaning that when you gamble, that's going to separate you from your money. Amen. 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 <laughs> now, the only thing, y'all, that's worse than going into debt it's not paying back your debt. Yeah. Did y'all know it's a sin not to pay your debt? Psalms 37, 21, it's up here on the board, y'all, says, the wicked borrows and does not repay. I want to read that again. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous gives generously. Now, y'all, the word wicked, that ain't a word I want to attach to my name. And you shouldn't either. But that's exactly how God describes those people who don't pay their bills or don't pay people uh, that they owe. 
when you borrow money and you don't pay it back, y'all, it's going to ruin your credit with creditors. And if you don't pay an individual that you borrowed money back from back, y'all, it's going to ruin your reputation. Let's keep it real, y'all. If somebody borrowed money from us and they don't pay us back, oh, we're going to tell everybody we know that they borrowed <laughs> money from us and didn't pay us back. Keep it real, y'all. We'll say, whatever you do, don't loan no money, Lizelle. Mm-mm. Because that joker, he ain't going to pay you back. Amen. We'll tell everybody we know. When you borrow money from people, y'all, and we don't pay them back, don't be fooled and think they ain't going to tell nobody. More than likely, they're going to drag your name through the mud. When you borrow money, you don't pay it back, y'all. Uh, more than likely, it's going to ruin your reputation. And when you borrow money from creditors and you don't pay them back, it's even worse on your reputation. Because when you borrow money from a creditor and you don't pay them back, they gonna tell the whole world that you borrowed money and didn't pay them back. How they gonna tell the whole world that you borrowed money and didn't pay them back? By putting it on your credit report. So the whole world can see that you borrowed money from them and didn't pay them back. Amen? Y'all, when creditors report negative information on your credit report, they're telling the whole world that they need to beware of you. Amen? They're telling the whole world that you stiffed them out of their money and that's a good chance that you're going to stiff the new company too. Amen? Y'all, bad credit says I'm untrustworthy when it comes to money. Bad credit says I'm untrustworthy when it comes to money. Amen? Y'all, now don't get me wrong, y'all. There are some exceptions to that rule. Some people credit got bad through no fault of their own. Some people credit got bad because they got sick for a period of time. Some people credit got bad uh, because they got laid off from their job. That's okay. That's one of the reasons why the Lord told the Israelites to cancel debt after seven years. Because he knew there were going to be certain people that were going to go into debt and weren't going to be able to pay it back through no fault of their own. And canceling the debt after seven years would give them a chance to have a fresh start. Amen. Y'all, it's one thing to have bad credit through no fault of your own because you got sick or you got laid off. But it's another thing to have bad credit because you were reckless with your credit or you made bad financial decisions. Y'all, some people think it ain't no big deal when they ruin their credit until they try to buy something else in the future, like a house or a car, and their credit won't allow them to buy it. Amen. The Bible warns us to be very careful about go going into debt, y'all. Let's talk about co-signing for a loan for somebody else. Does the Bible say anything about co-signing for a loan for somebody else? Of course it does. The Bible calls it surety. S-U-R-E-T-Y. What is surety? Surety is when a person takes responsibility for the debt of someone else. Y'all, Proverbs 22, 26 says, do not be one who shakes hand in pledge or put up security for debt. I want to make that a little simpler plain. Let me read you a new living translation of the scripture. It says, don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. So, should we be co-signing for other people's debt, y'all? According to the Bible, the answer is no. When you co-sign for somebody else, y'all, somebody else uh, debt, y'all, you put yourself at risk. Amen. If they don't pay that debt, the collection agent gonna come after you, and all that's gonna do is cause problems between you and the person that you co-sign for. Amen. If at all possible, y'all, we need to stay away from co-signing for loans for somebody else. Y'all, if you want a good relationship to go bad, co-sign for a loan for somebody else. Amen. The Bible warns us to be very cautious about going into debt, y'all. And if, if possible, we need to avoid it altogether. Amen. One of the best ways to avoid debt, y'all, and it's very simple, open up your savings account. And don't just open it up, y'all. Put some money in it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That way, when you need to make a large purchase, y'all, all you got to do is get the money out of your savings account. That way you ain't got to worry about nobody hounding you back down about paying back that debt. Amen. Y'all, if we would just save some money, a lot of times we wouldn't have to go into debt. 
Amen. Another way to avoid going into debt is to keep up with the money that you got coming in and the money that you got going out. Keep up with the money that you got coming in and you got going out. Y'all, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Amen. Set a budget for yourself so you don't run out of money and are forced to pull out that credit card. Y'all, some people are working themselves to death trying to pay off that debt. Some people are even working two jobs trying to pay off their debt. Y'all, when setting a strict budget for yourself, it's a way more effective way to pay off your debt than working two jobs. Y'all, you can pay off your debt with one job if you just start watching what you're spending. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Y'all, debt is bondage. And I'm closing, y'all. Debt is bondage, y'all. Uh, it's not God's will for us to be bogged down with debt. Amen. Debt takes away our freedom. But more importantly, it takes away our freedom to do what the Lord called us to do. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be a slave to nobody. Right. But neither should you. Amen. Amen. Final thought, y'all. If you don't have to go into debt, y'all, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And if you need to go into debt, Pay back the debt as quickly as possible. Amen. Y'all, the Lord wants us to be lenders, yes. not borrowers. Amen. 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 Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Amen.